Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk about the lowering of the freezing point due to the presence of the solute in a solvent. In this case, the solvent is water. And of course, we're going to take a look at what we call antifreeze. Antifreeze is quite often made out of ethylene glycol, and the chemical formula for ethylene glycol is up there on the board. And so the question might be, how much will the freezing point be lowered if I add a 50-50% solution of antifreeze into my radiator? And 50-50% solution may mean two different things. It could mean that it's 50% by mass or 50% by volume. Typically, they use 50% by volume, which throws it off a little bit. And let me show you how we can deal with that. Since the density of antifreeze is about 1.1 grams per liter, it's a little bit more, 1.11 grams per liter, that means that by mass, if you have a 50-50% solution, let's say in volume, that means you have about a 55% solution of antifreeze to water. So that would, you would have about 55% antifreeze and about 45% water by mass. And so let's go ahead and just kind of round it off to make it a little bit easier. Let's say that it's about 55% mass, mass to mass ratio. All right, if we do that, let's see what we then have. So let's say we want to make three kilograms of a water antifreeze solution. So we have a three kilogram total solution, which means out of the three kilogram, about 1.5 kilograms is water and about 1.5 kilograms is therefore ethylene glycol. I'll just call it EG for ethylene glycol. All right. So if we add one and a half kilograms of ethylene glycol to one and a half kilograms of water, then how much will the freezing point be lowered? Well, the first thing we want to know, since the equation is that the change in the temperature, that would be the change in the freezing point of the temperature, is equal to the constant for water, which is 1.86 kilo, uh, Kelvin per kilogram, uh, times kilograms per mole. So for every mole of solute added to one kilogram of water, the freezing point will be lowered by 1.86 degrees Kelvin, or 1.86 Kelvin. So we want to know how many moles of the solid you have, which means we need to know how many moles of antifreeze we have if we add 1.5 kilograms of the antifreeze to the water. So that means we need to find the molar mass of the antifreeze, ethylene glycol. And so here we see that in ethylene glycol, we have two carbon atoms, we have two oxygen atoms, and we have two, four, five, six hydrogen atoms. So find, let's find out what the molar mass is of ethylene glycol. So for the carbon, we have 2 times 12 grams, that would be 24 grams per mole of the carbon in there. We have, for the oxygen, we have 2 times 16 grams, or 32 grams per mole for the oxygen. And for the hydrogen, it's 6 times 1 gram, or a total of 6 grams for the hydrogen in that molecule. So when you add it all together, that 30, that would be 62 grams per mole. That's the molar mass for ethylene glycol. So since we're adding 1.5 kilograms, which is 1,500 grams, we can then find out how many moles of ethylene glycol we have. So we have, uh, uh, so the number of moles, it's always best to write out the equation, is equal to the mass that we're adding divided by the molar mass of the solute. Right? The mass that we're adding is 1,500 grams and the molar mass would be 62 grams per mole. And that'll give us the number of moles of ethylene glycol we're adding. All right, so we have 1,500 divided by 62. That gives us 24.2 moles, 24.2 moles of ethylene glycol. Now notice, the higher the concentration, the more ethylene glycol you add to less water, and that's very important because we're always looking for the ratio of the moles of solute to the kilograms of solvent. So as you're adding more, for example, when you go to a really cold climate, you may want to add as much as 75% ethylene glycol. That means you add more ethylene glycol to less kilograms of the solvent water, and therefore the, the lowering of the freezing temperature is severely, or you know, not severely, because it's a good thing, it's significantly lower. That's a better word for it. All right, so let's plug in the numbers that we have now. So the K would be 1.86 Kelvin uh, times kilograms per mole. So that for every mole added to one kilogram of water, it will lower the freezing point temperature by 1.86 degrees 
times the number of moles of the solute, which we found to be 24.2 moles, divided by the kilograms of salt. In this case, the kilogram of the water would only be one and a half kilograms, so we put 1.5 kilograms in there. Notice that the kilograms cancel out, the moles cancel out. We're simply left with Kelvin degrees, so 24.2 times 1.86 divided by 1.5 equals, that's 30. 30, and that would be Kelvin. All right, so that's a significant lowering of the temperature. Now, when we go ahead and add that to the number that it normally is, so temperature for freezing will be equal to the original temperature, which is 0 degrees centigrade, minus 30 centigrade degrees. So 30 Kelvin is the same as saying 30 centigrade degrees, which means the new freezing point would be equal to about minus 30 degrees centigrade. Minus 30 degrees centigrade is roughly about minus 22, about minus 22 Fahrenheit. So that's about minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. So that would be pretty good for most places in the world in the wintertime. Now again, like I said, if you want to go somewhere where it's even colder than that, you want to add even more ethylene glycol to less water to continue lowering that temperature. So that gives you a pretty idea how antifreeze works.